Hey now everybody, it's your pal Brady here from Monkey Edge. Getting ready to fire up the old video thing again. I got big Tommy boy on the camera. Where uh, Today we wanted to just give you guys a quick look at not the newest model, but one of the most recent models from Hinderer Knives. And that would be Chibuya, as Jack from Jack in the Box would say, the Jurassic. Now, at first glance, you know, Jurassic has got, obviously it's got the typical Hinderer build quality. We'll go all to that, into that a little bit. But one of the first things I noticed about the Jurassic when Rick showed me one of the, the early prototypes, I was like, well, it's darn near the size of an XM-18. However, once you put that Jurassic in your hand, you can immediately feel the difference. So it is very size comparable, very similar to an XM-18, but has like a totally different feel. Um, large part of that is because you can see this uh, more of this ramp surface with the spine jimping here um, kind of locks your hand in differently than an XM18. Not better or not worse, just differently. Um, and the other thing that really sets the Jurassic apart from the tried and true XM18 is the relationship, and I'll see if Big Tommy Boy can get this here, of the blade to the middle line of the knife. The Jurassic tends to have more of a Regardless of the blade profile, I realize there's different blade profiles on the XM18, but they all kind of have that same tip geometry, whereas the Jurassic is more of a drop point. So what that means is that you're going to get, you know, obviously a little bit, quite a bit more belly in the edge of that blade there. Um, you know, still plenty of tip utility, but it's not as, how do I say, is tip heavy really a word? I'm going to invent that here, tip heavy. So that's kind of the difference between, you know, the overall design thought. And like I said, once you lock one of these in your hands, again, not better, not worse, just totally different. I've really taken to, you know, um, I have one of the early Jurassics that uh, has been kind of my EDC for the past month or so. Um, and I really, I really dig it. It's not, uh, you know, not going to completely replace the XM18, but, you know, it's like uh, lasagna and cannoli, right? Sometimes you need both, right? Or tortellini or something. At any rate, so let's tear into the Jurassic. So anybody familiar with Hinderer is going to immediately uh, realize some of the, the traits, the common traits. You know, you got your clip here that can be, you know, uh, moved around for tip up or tip down carry. The, all Jurassics also feature the Hinderer modular backspacer system. And that's this little guy right here. And for those of you unfamiliar, we'll just show you how that works. Uh, Rick came up with this idea that you can, the user can easily... All right, see, I didn't even have to back that all the way out, but the user can easily change out the backspacers of their knife just by removing that, loosening up the set screw here. Now, you want to use the correct size driver, which is a .050, um, and as things go down the pipe, you know, Rick and I have talked about some of the cool things he has planned. You know, this one's obviously, um, you know, a lanyard loop at the, the top of the knife. Um, there's other stuff that are, you know, in the pipeline for different materials, different utility, different tools. Let me just thread that set screw a little bit back on there. The Jurassic is a little bit different in that it's stabilized by these tracks in the frame. And we'll get into there a little bit along with this um, standoff. So this literally just pops in there and you don't need to you don't need to get all crazy with this because it's mechanically held in place by those angles the set screw isn't actually taking hardly any force or tension so just give it a little finger tightening there so going through we got our typical you know like bomb proof hinderer construction um, we got the standoff in the rear that is holding the HMBS standoff here which is using the uh, eclipse style screws with the T T6 the Torx attachment Titanium frame lock, titanium liner, along with the G10 scale. Uh, Rick came up with a new texture and kind of keeping with that Jurassic theme, we went, uh, you know, kind of a scale look here, which looked kind of bitching with the layered G10s where you can see, you know, there's blue or green or, uh, you know, blue and black or green and black, red and black, etc. cetera. Um, these have also been made available with the traditional XM18 texture for those that prefer that. Um, of course, you know, like an XM18, flips open. Um, the thumb stud is actually in a little bit better of a geometry place for the you thumb stud openers than the XM18. It's a little bit further away from the pivot, so I find it easier to open with a stud than I do uh, a typical XM18. And, you know, same 
pivot, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this one happens to be an S35 VN. As you guys know that are Hinderer fans, you know, I'm sure we'll see other steals down the road, um, depending on, you know, when the gang at Hinderer gets a wild hair up their ass or what have you. But, you know, overall, again, 100% made in, in the Hinderer shop in uh, Wooster, Shreve, Ohio there, all the way down to the screws, you know. So, hey, what do you think, Tommy? Should we gut this thing and let them see what's going on inside of it just for in case they're super curious do it all right hey real quick i'll give you guys just another comparison so here we got an xm18 three incher the little guy the three and a half inch and the jurassic so again super similar sized uh to the xm18 you know if you've carried one of those for any length of time this is going to feel right at home in your pocket um, I will say that those with the, the larger mitts, uh, I think will dig the Jurassic a little bit more. It, it, it tends to work, but you know, I got like fat little Flintstone hands, little Hobbit hands, and I'm good to go with the Jurassic as well. I also want to point out just kind of this cool lock bar cut, you know, kind of at this crazy swooping angle there, just another cool touch. So since Tommy demanded it and Tommy, uh, Tommy gets what Tommy wants, we'll go ahead and break this sucker down. We'll try not to bore you. Now, I'll tell you, we're going to do a hinder disassembly video at some other point. But you guys know when these knives are assembled at the factory, they are assembled before they are sharpened. So even though I am a trained professional, call me a little girl if you want. But I like to throw just a couple quick layers of masking tape on the blade like that. Keeps accidents to a minimum. Also, if you're working on a knife, this is my pet peeve, so maybe Tommy, back out. Let me yell at people for a minute. Let me let me break it down with some 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 anger. Listen, folks, if you're working on anything, I don't care if it's a car, a human brain, or a knife. For God's sakes, use the right tools. You know, over the years at Monkey Edge, we've seen more knives buggered up by by guys using God knows what on them, and it, all I did was take it apart. Well, what would you take it apart with? A screwdriver? Well, no, all I had was this lawnmower blade and a ball peen hammer, and, and that's how I took it apart. Listen, just use good, decent tools. Use the right tool for the job. If it's a Torx fitting, get a set of Torx, man. You got a Harbor Freight, or if you got an Amazon or something, you know, go get a set of Torx wrenches. You didn't have to break the bank, but if you're going to take the damn thing apart, at least use the right tools for God's sakes. And Quality tools. I guess I should have said the Harbor Freight thing. You know, I'm also a believer in quality tools, especially like, you know, Brownells has these USA made screwdrivers. They're, they're anti cam screwdrivers in the right sizes uh, for Phillips. Just makes, keeps your screws from getting that buggered up and that, that you know, that uh, um, Bubba look to them, you know. So uh, at any rate, that's my rant. So we can fast forward through this. You know, Tommy will make this look super speedy. Uh, before working on a hinder knife, I like to pop off the clip just because it allows the knife to lay flat. You can do the filler tab too. Why not? We'll just do that just, just for, uh, what do they call that? Shits and grins, right? But again, I'm using the right size of screwdriver here, okay? Now. The advantage to doing that is that allows you to lay the knife flat when you're doing everything else, okay? Um, again, it uses T6, so what do we got here? T6. We, uh, I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Uh, German tool brand makes great stuff. Um, they're available on Amazon and other tool stores, so can't recommend their stuff highly enough. And we'll just go ahead and give these two screws. We'll break them suckers loose. And, you know, you don't have to have a hinder pivot tool. As you can see, this one's been through the ringer. We've had it for years. Sure as hell helps, though, with the spanner wrench. So I just hold that guy there. And notice how I'm leaving the blade at a 40, at a, you know, a 90 degree angle there. So we're not goofing, goobering up the lock face. And all this is, is the other part of the hinder armors tool that just put on a quarter inch hex bit on a Brownells handle. Just makes it a little bit easier to to uh to handle and then after it gets loose you can pop that sucker off and just all right there goes our pivot now at this point 
I'll go ahead and loosen these guys the rest of the way out. And so we'll give you, now if Tommy can get in here. See, I wanted to leave that backspacer on just to show you kind of how that works. There's the pin from the backspacer, um, the modular backspacer system. So when I remove this titanium liner, you'll see it even in more detail. So really, this screw is not absorbing or not taking very much stress at all. It's actually this pin in conjunction with the hook and the backspacer here that is absorbing the force. The screw is just kind of a, a placeholder, so it, it doesn't have to be totally beefy. That's kind of the genius of the system. So we'll just show you how this comes off real quick. Just back this out. Uh, 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 not enough, not enough. And boom, there you go. And again, you can see the corresponding track and the titanium lock side and the titanium liner there. Um, other than that, you know, we got a pretty, pretty straight ahead, you know, typical bomb proof hinderer construction here. You know, you got your uh, um, standoff here, which is threaded on both sides. Again, for the eclipse type screws, we'll pop off the blade. Got our Teflon washers, the other side of our 17.4 pH steel pivot. And there's a titanium lock side. And then now you can kind of see this cool swooshy thing cut out going on. And that is the Jurassic. So to put it back together again, you just do all that in reverse. Um, you're going to see two different sizes of washers. The thinner, the thinner one goes on the lock side. Uh, you know it's the lock side because if you try to screw it up and put the larger one on there, it will overlap that little lock thingy. So boom, there you go. So that's a look at the Jurassic. Tommy's going to go, this is going to go super fast motion here. You guys are going to think I'm a genius when you see me put this back together in like two seconds or something. Cue the uh, Gilligan's Island music. You know when they used to run real fast on Gilligan's Island? Tommy's too young for Gilligan's Island. Boom. All right. All right, guys. So thanks for tuning in and taking a look. And again, we got the Hinder Jurassic. These guys are shipping now. Um, you know, and of course, any of you Hinder dudes will know there are different flavors. You know, there's DLC ones, battle ones. There's even a little uh, limited digicam run. So if, uh, if you, but you know, like also like all Hinder things, you know, if you see a version that strikes your fancy, probably want to snag it before it is gone because you never know when you'll see one exactly like that again. Uh, and real quick, just before anybody asks in the comments, we, get, we always try to, it's a little bit boring just having a normal tabletop, right? So we try to have some extra stuff just, just for, for flavor. This here is build I just got back. Shout out to Tim and Bo with Two Rivers Arms crew in Oklahoma there. This is an early Romanian MD65 folder kit that was had some cool battlefield patina, even had... Um, Tommy, you can get on this dong here. You know, you got had some cool trench art, you know, board guy probably sitting at some commie checkpoint carving shit into his rifle. At any rate, this was a 1972 all matching kit. Two Rivers kind of did an awesome job on this battlefield pickup build. Um, you know, integrated the new US made Childers receiver. Other than that, uh, everything else is, is as it was from the kit. So it's a cool, cool rifle that exudes lots of vibe. Um, the Two Rivers gang are freaking awesome. So just thought we'd show that to you. If any of you guys are AK nerds out there, uh, like we are here, um, there you go. Little eye candy for you. So thanks again for tuning in. It's your pal Brady from Monkey Edge. We promise you we're going to be more dialed in with the videos. Uh, that Tommy is is going to become Martin Scorsese or something. He's going to get so good with this camera and editing these. See, there he is saying yeah. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. You can hit subscribe, but I don't know when we'll post another one, and, and we don't get paid anything for YouTube views or anything. So hit subscribe if you dig it. If not, uh, that's fine. Talk shit in the comments. We'll probably not reply. But at any rate, thanks. See ya.